Hey there folks, this is Mike, uh, working with this DC compressor here again. Uh, this is here in the last few weeks, I've been doing a couple little projects, trying to get back into the shop, get a little bit of work done. So, I needed a, uh, a little bit of a water chiller, a uh, brine chiller of sorts. Uh, didn't need to be anything fancy, just thought I'd slap something together. And so I pulled this DC compressor off the shelf that I was working with last year. Now, I never did get any kind of uh, really meaningful work done with it. Um, built a lot of stuff and messed around with it a whole hell of a lot, but the uh, problem came down to uh, trying to utilize way too much surface area for my heat exchangers for that tiny, tiny little compressor. And uh, it didn't seem to matter what I did as far as the expansion uh, device. Uh, it, it, it just wasn't going to work. So anyway, I lifted this uh, cute little uh, condenser with a computer fan out of a little ice cream maker. And uh, boy, it just, it's just perfect for this. Uh, so, I'm running propane in this. Uh, it's a little DC compressor. It's running on 24 volts right now. Off this little uh, power supply, which is just plugged in 110 volt AC. Um, I think this thing's about 80 watts. All together, right now, this whole system uh, stretched together is probably pulling about like, uh, maybe 1.2 amps uh, at 120 volts AC. So, uh, as it's set up right now, we have the uh, compressor discharges into my condenser. 24 volt uh, computer fan there. Uh, Subcooled liquid comes up out, goes through a little filter dryer into a length of capillary tube, which is wrapped around the suction line as a heat interchanger. Descends down into a couple of loops of copper uh, tubing and then comes right back up and uh, back into the compressor. That's a uh, valve on the back there that's just for charging. And whatnot. Um, so, right now, I only have a uh, suction reading. I don't have a high pressure reading. Um, I do have a little crappy little thermocouple just attached to the outside of the suction line. It's going to idea what the suction line superheat is just for mainly for charging purposes. But uh, when I started off with this thing I was using a needle valve. Uh, if anybody's watched my videos before I mess around with these things a hell of a lot. Now with a larger um, larger capacity for a compressor that's moving a lot more refrigerant you can use these um, Flare fittings, um, they're temperamental. There's a very tiny range that they operate at, largely because the uh, term needle valve is a misnomer. Um, it's not a very fine, fine adjustment for something like this. But uh, larger capacity stuff, you can use these um, to uh, make minor little adjustments to to uh, to affect your capacity. I tried it with this thing, and it was just next to impossible. It really was impossible to, uh, to charge it properly, and you know it was too easy to just adjust the thing, and, and, and then you'd mess the whole thing up because the, the charge in this thing is it's, uh, just barbecue grade propane. It's very very small, so uh, it was causing me all kinds of grief. Um, it was hard to just leave it set to where it was. So I just grabbed a piece of capillary tube that I had left over from the project last year. Probably isn't more than 15 inches. Um, and just slapped it together. Just spray some things together. There was no nitrogen purging or anything. This thing is full of contaminants. Don't really give a damn. Just looking for uh, something effective. But you know, a couple hours of work and uh, the thing, thing came together. There's some unusual configurations of copper tubing here. That's largely because um, these fittings and this tubing was almost entirely scrapped from previous projects. So uh, just cut a few ends off and you know, you find a piece like that and say, oh, well, I need a, something that looks like that right there. So you just whack it off and maybe reflare it or braze it or rebend it or whatever the hell you need. So uh, I like to recycle this stuff as much as I can without having to scrap it and buy fresh. It saves me actually a lot of time and uh, eh, whatever. I enjoy it. So um, I'm set up in this little uh, ice bucket here. Uh, picked that up at um, Goodwill for a couple of bucks. Pretty happy with that purchase. Um, Eventually, what this bucket is going to be, uh, that coil is actually going to be raised a bit in the water, um, so it's just kind of up here, and then and this drain here is actually going to be two copper lines that are going to be a two-phase thermosiphon. So the condenser of the thermosiphon is actually going to enter in there, and there's going to be coil at the bottom where uh, vapor can passively condense and drain back to a uh, evaporator down at the bottom, somewhat similar to a heat pipe operation. If you're familiar with that, and somewhat similar to um, a single phase, you know, a water thermosiphon loop for like a solar uh, solar heat application. 
Um, so there's another video about that. I'm hoping to do more stuff with that in the future here. It's going to be this bucket. It's going to be raised to an elevated position, you know, somewhere up high. And there's going to be a lower bucket, like one of those ones sitting over there. It's going to be down low. It's going to have a coil on it, something like that, probably exactly that. Coil like that at the top. Um, I have some um, borosilicate glass tubing that's going to go in the middle with some hose clamps and some, some rubber tubing, rubber hose. Uh, to give an indication of how much migration of uh, liquid and slugging and uh, bubble pumping and all that good happy stuff. So uh, it's just a fun little project. I want to see how effective a thermosiphon is, and uh, I'm looking to operate at lower temperatures. Um, of course, I could operate with, I could test it with a, a heat gun like that one over there, but um, those uh, that's a whole different ballgame there. I want to do it more in refrigeration temperatures because I have some projects down the road. I like to work with so um, just to give you an idea of what's going on here. Uh, that first number there is the temperature of the water here, 38 degrees, started at about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhat uh, around 20 minutes ago. Um, second number there is 43 degrees. That's uh, this uh, suction thing a couple there. Um, the corresponds to we have about 55 degrees, uh, excuse me, 55 psi gauge. Uh, working with propane, which corresponds to about 33 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, you know, probably roughly 10 degrees of superheat. Uh, this reading is taken on the exterior of the copper. Um, I found in the past taking the, the internal reading, uh, which I could do with this uh, equipment that I have. I just haven't set it up like that yet. Uh, it's probably less superheat. Um, I chose to go with the heat interchanger, um, not because I was really trying to do anything fancy at all. Uh, it's very practical. Um, simply because I want to be able to remove some heat from the um, uh, high pressure discharge here, this capillary tube. Um, it is effective, there's definitely, uh, this is warm, this is quite cool, which means I'm giving up heat to the suction line. Um, there's not really a huge advantage there other than increasing the entire cooling capacity of the system theoretically. Um, the advantage here is that I can try to to ensure that I'm not getting any liquid slugging back with the compressor. Um, it just warms that well, those gases a little bit and tries to keep that superheat value in a really positive range. Um, you do have a small pump here operating, just uh, sucking and blowing. Uh, a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt pump. Um, that came out of the ice cream machine too. We just did that to keep the water circulated up. Uh, without that, I've noticed that the coils will freeze up very, very rapidly. So it just kind of keeps things circulated around. But uh, all in all, it's a very crude setup. I'm just kind of an uh, alligator clipped up here, you know, pretty bad, pretty bad setup. I need to even mount that board somewhere so I don't have to damage it. Um, but uh, it's an effective little bugger. Um, it's proven that I'd like to work with this thing here a little bit more in the future. Uh, it is a little noisy, as uh, Sean Dobby has uh, really pointed out. Uh, uh, it does work. I would shy away from the needle valve again for something small like this unless you can find something that's very, very fine, such as uh, my little pneumatic expansion valve, which is easily adjustable with a pressure regulator off of an air tank. So, not too interested in working with that on the project. That was, that was some old stuff there. Uh, yeah, and of course, it's very easy to charge as well. Um, so, you just give it a little bit of squirt of propane in there. Um, from a vacuum state, uh, let her run, and then just slowly, uh, slowly give it to her until uh, get some heat here on the discharge. And uh, you know, keep an eye on your uh, you know, suction. If that suction starts sweating a little bit, uh, if you are able to measure the temperature, uh, you know, by all means, try to do a superheat value. Uh, avoid any liquids looking bad at all. Back at all costs. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty, you know, once you've got a, a, a good idea of what you're, you're doing, uh, uh, especially if you're not working with a compression pod, it's just something you ripped out of a refrigerator or an air conditioner, uh, just have fun. Uh, just uh, just go to town and uh, charge slow. You know? Just charge slow and give it a little time to acquiesce or whatever term you want to use and uh, you know, have fun. So anyway, that's uh, something you can do with a little... Uh, a little cocaine compressor available on eBay. So thanks for watching.